everybody. Thanks for watching. And just a quick reminder that Zodiac Body Volume 2 is now available. And um, also make sure you guys are signing up for Merkabah Academy. If you go ahead and get the $7.99 a month for Merkabah Academy Pro, make sure you guys are already registered on Merkabah Academy. Make sure you register before you get that or uh, never pay again membership, which is uh, also available. Just make sure you register for Merkabah Academy. It makes it a lot easier. And, um, you know, you guys will get uh, access to the site, you know, faster. Also for, uh, you know, members, the site is updated. Um, if you were going straight to Vimeo to see the videos, that's where your problem was. Make sure you go to Merkable Academy and go to Conscious Courses and scroll down. You can still now, but you can access the uh, video library now. You can also access the videos that's not going to be on YouTube. And um, you can access the Never Pay Again membership. And all those videos are now available to watch and download. And, um, you know, you click the video and, you know, you'll be able to watch it and download it. So you guys have access to that if you are a Never Pay Again member. Also, for my lifetime members, you guys have access when you go to video library. You have access to those videos, even videos that you haven't paid for. I gave you guys access to it. You just won't get any updated, or, I mean, any new videos unless you become Never Pay Again you will have to buy those, but it's up, it's working, it's running, and it will be uh, updated a little bit more, but we won't have to shut the site down to do so. So appreciate your patience on that, but make sure you guys are going there and registering before you do anything else and make sure, you know, you're registered. But, um, you know, I want to make sure everybody who is looking for um, certain videos are able to find them, which is why, you know, I set it up the way it's set up, but very easy to navigate. And um, it's going to get easier. So, you know, it's a process. And I appreciate everybody's patience on everything that has been going on, books and all. We're getting everything out. As I said, nobody will be forgotten. We got you guys. They're moving as fast as possible. But, um, yeah, I want to get into this video and just go into some of the information we talked about before. Oh, yeah, real quick. Also, it's a new video on Merkle Academy in the, you know, can't be shown on YouTube section. If it's not up there right now, then it'll be up there tomorrow which Saturday. So make sure you guys um, look there for new videos. Um, also for people who are looking for emails, like we send out emails. So I don't understand, um, you know, it's a, it's a process. Like, you know, everything is just not the way it seems to be. So when I send out mass emails, I mean, you expect when you see it, when you send an email out for it to get to the person directly and people are not getting emails for days, even weeks later, um, you know, because sometimes when sent out emails and it hits a person who changed the email or the email is, you know, done or what have you, you know, I get the return email, you know, that's basically saying that can't reach this person. And then sometimes that's like two weeks later. And I'm like, yeah, I sent that email like two weeks ago. So that's probably what's happening. The best thing I can say is, as I said, make sure you guys are following on, um, you know, Instagram, here on YouTube. Make sure you're following the Facebook page I gave you guys. Make sure you're looking on Merkable Academy because whenever something new comes out, I post it on all those uh, platforms for everybody to see and for you guys to be updated and you can see what's happening. I always post in my story on Instagram whenever I put anything new out. So um, make sure you guys are following. You have so many different ways to get updates uh, if the bell is not working here on YouTube. So just follow those uh, platforms and, um, you know, stay up to date. But yeah, going back into, you know, what we talked about in the last videos with the apologetics and just like, um, you know, so much people, as I said, coming into this information and trying to understand what's going on. And we got to realize that we're coming from a place of people, you know, not understanding any of this information we talk about, you know, people not knowing what the Septuagint Septuagint is, and I know what the codex is or any of these, um, you know, received texts or anything about the Council of Nicaea. And it's a lot of people who just accepted what they were told about Christianity. As I said, you go into church and, you know, you see all those people worshiping God and, you know, our culture, you know, society, everything. You see movies, there's so much surrounding religion that it's hard for a person not to accept it. You know, one of the things that I got into is you know, just understanding the whole slavery aspect of Christianity. And it's one of the things that, you know, black folks don't want to touch on because they don't know how to answer those questions. And it's the elephant in the room. 
that, you know, we can sit here and, and try to praise this religion that enslaved us. And then, of course, you're going to have Christians say, well, you know, it wasn't a religion. There was people using the Bible the wrong way. Nothing wrong with the Bible. The Bible is fine. They were just using it to enslave us and to trick us. But then this is coming from people who believe in a book where a God who, you know, supposedly exists punishes people for doing the slightest, littlest thing. And we're talking about something huge here. And, you know, that is covered up by the fact that the Bible condones slavery. But it's, it's not saying that the Bible condones slavery to benefit people who is using the Bible to deceive, you know, the people they're enslaving. So it's, you know, it's touchy. And it's like one of those things where you have to analyze and use common sense and say, hey, what is this really about? You know, we have this book that's basically telling us all this stuff that's impossible. And it's being told to us by people who who's enslaving us. And it's in their best interest to keep us as slaves. So even though we couldn't read back then, we can we can understand what they were talking about. We heard what they were saying and we had to listen to what they were saying. And it doesn't matter what we thought. We were slaves. If we would have ran, we would have got our heads shot off or hung or beaten to death. So we're talking about, you know, basically um, indoctrinating people under fear of death, fear of pain. So you see people going through that, what do you, what do you think their reaction is going to be that for hundreds of years, you know, being indoctrinated and being jolted into people's head under penalty of pain of death. But understand, you know, people want us to view the book as a historical book. The Bible is a historical book and believe in the context in which you're speaking of, which is, you know, I just can't do that as a logical person. But if we're going to, you know, take that whole route, and say it's a historical book and it's a book we're supposed to listen to and it's supposed to be accurate. It's a lot of things you got to point out pertaining to, you know, this, you know, to history. And, you know, we look at the book and we see, as I said, it condones slavery, but it's so much other things we got to look at and it pertains to history, you know, real historical facts that's, that's proven that we can prove. And as I just said, you know, we know we were enslaved. We understand colonization and what took place in Africa and, you know, everything that happened. And that's real proven history that we know happened that we can prove. So when we go into the biblical text and we see stuff that's similar, it's like, okay, which, you know, which is real? What are they actually talking about here? And I'm referring to, you know, just looking at the, you know, starting with the Ten Commandments and I always go into this and I say, you know, okay, you guys want to look at this as a historical book and stuff that we're supposed to follow. All right, then. So we get the Ten Commandments from Moses, you know, give it to him, you know, supposedly by God. And remember, it says, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. And then God goes and commands them to do the exact, you know, same thing. And I touched on this before and it's like, OK, don't kill, don't steal. But then God says, hey, that's your land. I'm giving it to you. All you got to do is go there and kill these people and take it. And then steal their shit and divide it amongst yourselves. But thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. And you have some people that's, you know, say that, you know, that's commandments for, you know, the Hebrews. And if that's the case, then we're not supposed to abide by that. So, you know, that can't be true um, in a biblical sense. But we have those commandments. And then, as I said, you know, we we got to look at these people, the Gergeshites and the Perisites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and Canaanites. And we got to look at these people. And as I pointed out before, we trace these people back to Ham. And as everybody knows, Ham is supposed to be where the African people come from. So we talk about context here. So you have all these people, you know, who, what, what are they doing? What was their fault in the Bible? What did they do wrong? And, and people say, well, they wasn't worshiping God. You know, okay, well, show me the Bible that exists back then or the preachers and churches that existed back then or the, you know, the uh, uh, seven day Adventists or you got the Mormons or whoever was pushing Jesus. Who existed back then that was walking around and going into these villages and pushing the Bible or pushing Christianity, which didn't exist yet? or pushing this belief in this God on these people for them to accept and believe in. There's no such thing. These people were supposedly worshiping, 
you know, false idols. Okay, well, who was there to tell him it was false? If God is sending angels down to destroy and showing all his power, why not just go to these people and say, hey, this is, I'm the Lord, your God, who created you, and you are supposed to worship me. You know, we don't see this. We just see go in and kill them and wipe them out and utterly destroy these people, kill the kids, the babies, or what have you. But there is no, you know, mercy. There is no type of teaching that's happening. And it goes back to what I was talking about in um, Greek mythology and ancient history uh, videos when I was saying this is the, it says clear, I am the Lord, your God, you know, the God of Israel, your God. And you have to understand what that really means and what it's talking about esoterically. But in any case, we got to look at that and we got to say, hey, you know, this supposed to go back to African people, then we have context. The fact that Africans was enslaved, and then now we have these Africans in America that's being, you know, taught the Bible. And the Bible is saying that you should be, obey the slave master as you obey Jesus, who's supposed to be, you know, son of God, and to, you know, turn out the cheek and, you know, basically all this stuff that would benefit people that's enslaving us and the system that's enslaving us. So it's sketchy. It's weird. It's something that we can't, uh, as, you know, intelligent people, just accept as fact when you have this so-called history. And again, I know I touched on this before, but it's one of the things I got to reiterate and I want as many videos as possible out explaining this because this is what I get the most from people when I talk to them, you know, black folks. And they always really go into, um, you know, everybody was enslaved. It wasn't the only people that was enslaved. And what does that have to do with what happened to black folks in this country, you know, during and after slavery? You know, we what happened to us happened to nobody else but us. And then you have this, this Bible where we supposed to be able to pray to this dude and shit going to be right. And that's not happening. And even still to this day, we looking and we seeing our oppression and we seeing what's happening with us and how we are at the bottom. The people who worship the most, you know, supposedly over 600, 700 million Christians in Africa. And look, look, look what's happening over there. Got people starving to death. You got people living in poverty. They don't even control their own land and their resources. But they got the book and they're praising this God. Meanwhile, the people who are the wealthiest and doing the most, it's the people in power who don't look like them. And that's that's not weird to y'all. It's something you have to think about. And then you have to go and look at everything else. These people who own the most, who are the richest, who taught us this book that says it's impossible for a rich person to get into heaven, yet they are the richest people on the planet. But we're supposed to just accept this book. And then, you know, when we ask questions and say something, we're, we're antichrist, which we are. And, you know, we're evil, which we are <laughs> evil. Everybody is. So it's, it's stuff that, you know, you apologetics, you know, and a bunch of you jumped on my ass and sent me emails after the last video, which we had our conversations, but Again, this is what I'm trying to, you know, elaborate on because it's one of the things for us as conscious people that we look to and we scratch our head and we say we can't accept this, not just because of these reasons, but because, you know, the common sense reasons that, you know, donkeys and snakes can't talk, grown ass man can't survive three days in a big fish, stuff that I always say. It's just, we can't, I'm a grown ass man. I can't, I can't do that. I just can't accept that. Not trying to be funny. It's just something that, messes with me to try to believe in that. It's, it's, I'm not going to do it, but I understand the metaphorical stories behind these stories and what they're actually talking to and speaking to. And if you don't try to break down these stories, and understand what it's saying esoterically and understand what it goes back to, then you, you're going to stay a believer in faith. And that's where you have to stick to. So apologetics, apologists, whatever you want to call yourselves. You know, there is no way. I mean, the whole field is stupid. It's just dumb because it's basically you're creating a field for people to try to justify lies. That's that's what it is. It's overkill. It's overkill for people who, who are supposed to have faith. Because, you know, if you have faith, what are you, what are you talking for? There's nothing else that needs to be said. If a person decides they don't believe, they don't believe. You're supposed to have faith and go about your business and just go ahead and worship. It seems like these people are bent on trying to prove or give validity to their religion 
because deep down inside they want to believe it. But, you know, their subconscious is, is firing off neurons in their brain and they see the bullshit. And, you know, it's hard to not be real with yourself when you're alone. And when you're alone, you know damn well you're not following the book. You know, you don't know the book. You haven't researched it. You just have this feeling inside that you want to believe because you're either scared or you like what you heard thus far. But you couldn't have possibly read the Bible because if you did, you wouldn't like what you read. It's people who have this complex where they just have to be right. They don't like to lose. They don't like to look stupid. And some people, no matter how wrong they are, they won't admit it. It's hard for them to admit it. They don't want to give in. And it's not even about that. It's about getting out right information, right knowledge to people who really want it. And it's hard to do that when you have people who know damn well they're wrong, who's jumping in and saying stuff that they don't practice or believe in themselves. I see a bunch of Christians who will post, you know, a Christian post, but then minutes later post something that goes completely against the Bible. A lot of Christians don't realize they're not even supposed to eat swine. They ain't supposed to eat pork. Now when the Christians eat bacon and you know pork stuff, pork products every single day, and they will argue you down about the Bible, then go eat a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. And it tells you clear as day you ain't supposed to eat it. And it's like, you know, I heard the, I heard the excuses. Well, that's the Old Testament. We're not supposed to follow the Old Testament no more. So we're not supposed to supposed to follow the Ten Commandments then. Because that's that's an that's an old testament. So I, I guess we're not supposed to follow those either. But you have people who know damn well they're not following and living by the book. Stuff clear as day in the book that they go against every single day. But yeah, the evolutionist, you know, who I had a conversation with, um, you know, and people ask this question a lot. And I have videos on this stuff. I know I have a lot of videos and I touch on a lot of this stuff. And it's one of the reasons why I'm trying to go back in and do videos to reiterate some of this stuff, because it's a lot of videos where it's a lot of information, but in like one video. You know, so it's one of the reasons why I try to repeat a lot of this stuff so I can have it in multiple places because I can't remember what video is in. And it's hard for me to track down some of these videos to give you guys information or point you in the right direction as to where I said what. So, you know, for the evolutionist people, the people, you know, it's just nonsense. <sighs> the stuff that people believe in, I just, it's crazy. But it's understandable because if, if you're, if you went to school or if you believe in people and their teachings and you, somebody got degrees or what have you and TV is telling you something, you know, people are going to accept, you know, if they don't do no research. But yeah, talked about the whole thing with the Neanderthals and I broke this whole thing down and, you know, it's people who still want to believe it. Now, if you have hate in your heart and you want to believe, and racist monkey blood and, you know, people evolving from monkeys or what have you. And you want you want to believe in all that, just believe in what you want to believe. In. You have to look at common sense and, and what's there and who, you know, who's a real scientist that really put out information that makes sense. So, you know, I broke down with Neanderthals and I told you guys, if you believe in Neanderthals, do you believe that white skin existed before black skin? So just understand that. And you have to look at the evolution chart. And I gave it to you guys in my book and I gave it to you in, in, the, in the video. And, you know, on the Smithsonian website, they'll tell you clear as day because they're giving you all this Neanderthal talk and, you know, depictions. They'll tell you that, um, you know, humans, we share a common ancestor with primates. And it's this whole misconception that we evolved from primates. You know, clear as day, you look at a monkey hand, you look at your hand, you can see the resemblance. We have their DNA genes. We share genes with them and, and many, many other animals. But um, it's not that we came from them, that we share a common ancestor. That common ancestor is called the missing link. We don't know what it is. And it's one of the things that scratch you scratch your head that, OK, well, how can you give us this evolution chart? And you have a question mark where. This missing link is supposed to be, and you don't know what it is or what it looked like. It's questionable. If you can give us an evolution chart, that means you have some type of DNA or some type of information where you were able to determine that this, you know, Homo sapien, Homo uh, australopithecus, Homo erectus, you know, all that Asian Homo erectus, whatever. 
you have some type of information or DNA to where you can prove that this these things ex exist. You know, so it's where you look at the Neanderthal and you look at, you know, Homo heidelbergensis, dark skin, light skin. And this is before Homo sapiens, which would be us. But um, Smithsonian tells you on a website that, you know, we have a common ancestor. They don't know what it is. So then you follow the evolution chart and you see, well, OK, we get this Asian Homo erectus and what have you all the way to us. You know, and um, we have the missing link. So what is the missing link? It has to be something that looks, you know, like us or, you know, like a primate. So with uh, Homo australopithecus africanus or Homo australopithecus afarensis, however you want to, whatever one you want to go to, um, we have them at this beginning of this evolution chart. And then we see it going up and, you know, we get the Lucy bones and Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, I mean, and, you know, so on and so forth. And it's like, OK, boom, we have this this scale that they, they've given us. And I talked about how you have uh, Dr. Uh, Jim Lee, who is a Chinese uh, professor who, you know, took it upon himself to find out what was going on with this. Asian Homo erectus and them believing that Chinese people evolved separately from everybody else. And what he did was he did his own research and they did a huge study, like 20,000 people. And they basically tried to match this DNA from these Asians, these Chinese people with this Asian Homo erectus and, you know, nobody matched. But every single one of them matched Africans, their African ancestors, which show them that they came from Africa. And I touched on the sand people of South Africa. So when you Google them, sand people of South Africa, you see these people, you know, this is Africans. This is South Africa. You clearly see that this is where Asians came from. And I talked about, you know, my experience, you know, I've been all over the world. When I went to Thailand, you know, I talked about the Mani. You look at the Mani people, you Google them, look at them. This is the indigenous people of Thailand. They have dark skin, they have Afros. So, on my trip to uh, Thailand, I basically, I drove the entire North Thailand. Everywhere, small villages all over. I talked about Pratt, walked in there and I could have been Jay-Z. Whole village shut down, got quiet. Everybody was staring at me. It was crazy. And these were cool people. And, you know, some of the kids were scared. And, you know, everybody came up to me and they was touching me, touching my skin. And what they called me basically translated to the old ones, one of the old ones. So they're talking about the money who the money just stay to themselves. They don't really bother nobody. You know, people help them out when they come down there, but they know they knew the elders knew who the indigenous people were and that they look like me, which was dope. So I got a little bit of a history lesson and learned some stuff, you know, being around these people. But you got to understand that, you know, everybody looked like us at one point. And, you know, you go back to the ancient world, talked about the dark skinned gods and Buddhism and how all of these ancient sites, when you go back to them, you see dark skinned people. This is not something to try to push, you know, race dominance and say that, you know, we're better than everybody else and all this and that. It's facts and truth. You know, can't stand it when people, when we talk about this information, you know, people jump out and say racism or we're trying to, you know, assert dominance over all other races or what have you. It's facts. It's truth. It's stuff you can go look up yourself and it is what it is. No matter what you believe, this is, this is truth. And, um, when you go and you start looking back, it's, that's what you find. You know, you see this and it's all over the place. The point is to put it in context with, um, this belief in evolution and how things were changed. Like, you can't just go strictly off Darwinism and just say, this is how it was. You got to understand what they changed to make stuff, you know, fit. Because if they're going to go so far as to give us the Bible and give us these paintings of white Jesus and ain't no black people in heaven. We grew up seeing nothing but white angels, nothing but white Jesus and white prophets or what have you. Then what makes you think they're not going to, you know, go ahead and touch on the evolution theory? Of course, they're going to go and mess with that as well. because. It's what they're doing. It's what's going to be taught. So we got to go back in the same context as, you know, understanding biblical history and the history that they gave us in almost every aspect and say, where is the bullshit? And this is bullshit. So, you know, 
it's going to be tough for people to accept, you know, what's what I'm basically saying. And I broke it down more deeply in a video, you know, with the Neanderthal. And yeah, they say that white people share Neanderthal genes, Asians, Neanderthal, Neanderthal genes. Black people, we don't have no Neanderthal genes. So they're trying to give you this context that we are something different. And the question is, you know, because Smith Smithsonian is tell you, uh, you know, that the Neanderthal at some point made it with, you know, the Homo sapien, which made it with black people, Africans. And that is what created the white race. And as I said, you can't take no Kunta Kinte, Michael Blackson looking African, and you make that with anything, it's not coming out with blind hair and blue eyes. It's not going to happen. It's just our genetics is too dominant. It's not going to happen. It don't happen today. There's no reason to believe that it happened back then. I'm not going to get into the whole ice theory, but it's um common sense. But we look at that. And then, of course, we look at albinism. And I talked about OCA, the um, one, two, three. Oculocutaneous albinism and how the patient zero is obviously African people because we are the only people on the planet that can carry all of the traits of OCA. And that is only indicative of a person that is patient zero, you know, the original, you know, and OCA is hereditary and every race of people on the planet has it and it's hereditary. So what does that tell you? Where mom and daddy? came from us. We gave it to you guys, got passed down. And it's a trait of the mutation that took place that Dr. Um, Keith Chang uh, talked about when he found the mutation. So this is not stuff, you know, that's out there. This is stuff that's proven that we have actual genetics to back it up. We have the actual mutation that, you know, Keith Chang put all this stuff up before that he found, that they found a long time ago. And it's one of the reasons why we have multiple TED Talk videos breaking this down to where now it's so proven now that they're talking about it. So we can skip all the bullshit. You don't want to believe me. You can go and look up the many TED Talk videos where they're breaking this down. And I gave you guys videos on my Instagram uh, where, you know, they come out and they're telling you, like, hey, everybody was black at one point. And this is what happened. The mutation occurred. And whether they want to say it's evolution and they are the, you know, the new species or whatever they want to, however they want to spin it, they changed everything when they took it back and they told you that, hey, everybody was black at one point. We was here first. So skip all that other bullshit people talking about and what belongs to who or what have you. They're telling you clear as day, white folks, because it ain't just us who was here. So again, we just spinning all this into conquests and what took place once. These people came into, you know, a position, the position they came into to be able to take over and so much stuff that goes into that. But point is, this is what we look back to, to, you know, really gauge our decision on Christianity and what, you know, people want to believe who don't understand this whole conscious, you know, argument is that because, you know, we're not on the Christian side that we somehow are. Darwinists that we believe in Darwinism. And then you have people who don't even understand, you know, comedic science and consciousness and what that really is. They just, you're an atheist. But, you know, what do we believe in? Like, you know, as an atheist, what do, what is our philosophy? Like, what are we talking about? And it's just, oh, you don't have a God. And it's just, it's just it. You just want to be, you know, evil and not believe in anything. And it's, not that. Just for some people it is, but not for black conscious people. We have a whole bunch that we talk about. But to bring in the Darwin side, bring in the evolution side, and how it fits with religion and how we attack both things. We don't really have to touch Darwinism because it's not something that we need to touch. It's stuff that, you know, it's part of all this when you when you understand. It's not the far fetched craziness of the Bible. It's stuff that we can OK, well, some scientists said this and, and this is some information. Let's look at it and act accordingly. And that's what we've done. And that's that's what research is about. Don't don't just believe what you've been told. And I tell everybody, that, don't believe me. Don't just believe what I'm telling you. Go and do your own research. It's just that simple. It's not that we're trying to push stuff on people. It's, you know, hey, I'm trying to help you out. 
this is what I found, you know, take a look at it. You choose to accept it, then you accept it. But I expect everybody to go and look for themselves. And that's what people have been doing. And now we at a point where this information is enough out there for people to go and find, you know, whatever they want. But as we know, and this is where it gets into the real shit. Everything is in books. I hate to tell you. It's in books. It's so much shit in books that you're not going. And, and people, that's the thing. Y'all can't fathom this because you're also caught up in this computer information age. Everything is in books. You're not going to find a lot of this stuff online. You will not find it. You got to buy a book. It's in books. All the knowledge, all the deep shit, everything is in books. And you'll see it's completely different. It's not what you're going to find online. It's going to be in the older books. They're going to be more expensive and they're expensive for a reason. And you got to read. And they know you're not reading. They know you'd rather look on your phone or try to Google some shit. And this is why so many of these Christian, so-called Christian scholars get things wrong because they don't understand the algorithm. And if your keyword searches and your Googling is going towards people that is, you know, or you're trying to prove something with the Bible, nine times out of 10, it's going to seem somewhere where the person who put the article together or the information together is a Christian. So you have a biased source and they're not, they're not realizing this. Your research is biased because you're going straight to a Christian source and not really, you know, realizing what this is. It's just something to validate what you want to believe and you're not doing any constructive criticism or let's just say real research and looking at critics and people who are opposed to what you believe in, hearing them out and looking at their information. This is what's going on. And these apologetics, what they try to do is break all this stuff down, this information that exists, but they still don't go into the independent researchers information and say, hey, this guy said this and it can it's completely crush what I believe. They don't do that. They pick the people that's going to fit what they wanted to believe. And that's what they believe. It's just how, how it is. But yeah, I'm going to get into this quick video real fast. Put out this information. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. And as I say, I want to get more of this stuff out because I'm, I'm just I'm just getting bombarded with so many questions that you know I have videos and a lot of this stuff already. But, you know, it's a lot of people who really believe in, in this end time stuff and the biblical things. And Christianity is here. It's not going nowhere. And, you know, you have people our age, remember, they are age and they believe and they had kids and they taught it to their kids. And then now, you know, my age, my son's 21. If, if he had a kid, you know, in a year or two years from now, and if he was a Christian or those Christians would probably teach their kids the same thing. So we're going to be dealing with this for who knows how long. So the information is going to keep cycling. It's important to know what you know, to learn this stuff, learn as much as possible and get it out. You know, you learn as much so you, you can be able to give this information to somebody and, you know, change their mind or hopefully get them into, you know, right knowledge. But yeah, thank you guys for taking the time to watch. See you next video.